Hi, my name is Jesse Meckling, the Education Director at the Center for Coastal Studies. We're a nonprofit research, rescue, and education organization in Provincetown, Massachusetts. So today I'm going to be taking you all on a whale walk. And the title of today's program is Whale Walk to Environmental Education. And I admit I didn't make that title up. Um, it was the title kind of given to me because I said I wanted to do a whale walk with you all, uh, take you out to see if we can see some whales. Uh, because it is my love of whales and as a youngster that got me into marine education, environmental education. So I hope to sort of weave my story um, throughout this walk and, and through this presentation about how I became an environmental educator. So today I hope you can just join me and we'll, we'll take a walk out here. We're at the very end of uh, Cape Cod and we're going to see if we can see some whales. So uh, let's get going. You know, certainly one of the best things about being an environmental educator is being able to come outside. Admittedly, because I live in New England, I spend most of my time actually in an office in front of a computer or maybe working with schools. But on those rare occasions, and certainly when the water weather turns really nice, I'm outside as much as I can, like this beautiful, unusually beautiful March day here, where I get to come out and share my knowledge and my passion for, in this case, the ocean. Um, and get to see places like this. So we made it out. Here we are at Race Point Lighthouse. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar, I'm gonna use my arm as a map of the Cape. You might be familiar with this. So uh, I'm right up here at the end, um, the very tip of Cape Cod. And I'm looking behind me as it's this body of water called Cape Cod Bay. And Cape Cod Bay, this time of year in March and April, is uh, home to one of the most endangered animals uh, on our planet, called the North Atlantic right whale. And for the past couple weeks, uh, as the sun's been getting higher in the sky, the productivity in this bay has been heating up. And what do I mean by that? I mean little tiny photosynthetic organisms called plankton, phytoplankton, have been growing and reproducing and creating this a massive amount of, of primary production uh, in the waters out here. Uh, and following that are little tiny animals called zooplankton eating on those phytoplankton. Uh, and after the zooplankton, in this case, come the right whales. Right whales are a certain type of whale, a plankton eating whale. Uh, they almost exclusively eat plankton. In fact, most whales don't, but they're one of the few plankton eating whales um, and it's because of this tremendous productivity that's happening in this beautiful bay behind me that they come here so we'll we'll take a look and see if we can see anything so I can see clear across the bay which is oh about 16 20 miles of Plymouth uh, beautiful day, but nothing out there, no life that I can see except for some, some loons, some sea ducks, some gulls. Uh, I know the whales are out there, they're just out of my view. Um, but what do you look for when you come look for whales? Um, with right whales, right whales are quite unique. Right whales have a, uh, we of course look for their spout, that's their breath. So when you see the spout of the whale, that's, um, that's the exhalation, the whale is uh, breathing out. Not like in Finding Nemo where they're spitting out water, it's actually their breath. Um, so we look for that. Right whales have a unique spout, it actually comes out like a V. Um, so that's our first sign when looking for these whales. Um, they're quite unusual because they also, they lack a dorsal fin, so their, their back is completely flat. Uh, so if we see a whale out here that has no dorsal fin, we know immediately it's a right whale. Uh, the other whales we can see out here 
minke whales, humpback whales, uh, finbacks, and later in the spring in May, a whale called a say whale. Those whales all have dorsal fins. They're all different sizes, so we a lot of times we can tell. For example, minke is the smallest of the the baleen species of whale here. That's whales that have baleen in their mouth instead of teeth. Uh, the finbacks the largest it is it can be hard to distinguish between a finback and a say whale because they, they are similar in size uh, but a humpback is the accurate ac acrobatic active whale out here uh, but usually this time of year they come a little bit later so we don't start seeing generally finbacks humpbacks and minkies until more regularly in april end of march april but march and april is the time for the right whale so you look for its spout Look for a whale that, that's, that lacks dorsal fins. Sometimes you see the tail or the fluke. Sometimes you see the flippers come up. But the unique thing about the right whales is, is what they're feeding on. They're feeding on that tiny microscopic zooplankton I mentioned, an animal called a copepod, which is their favorite. And when those copepods are at the surface, the right whales will um, use their very large plates of baleen, sometimes up to six feet and they will skim through the water. And when you see that at the surface, it's super cool. It's, uh, you know, they, they go just like lawnmowers. If they get into a big patch of plankton, they'll just go back and forth. And I've seen them right here at this beach, you know, 50 yards, 50 meters off the shore here, just going back and forth slowly through that big patch of plankton. Because whales, large whales, you might think they eat all the time, but actually they don't. Um, takes too much energy to constantly swim around eating so they they want to use their energy um, and eat productively so they'll start eating only when there's a certain amount of food and they like those patches when they get really really big and once they do then they'll just eat and eat and eat and eat for for hours um, so that's the coolest thing to see when you see that eating that feeding pattern and sometimes it brings right whales right onto shore I mean 20 yards from shore, it's pretty amazing to see. So the right whale got its name because it was the right whale to hunt. It's a large species, as I mentioned. Used to live in the Eastern Atlantic over by Europe. It was hunted out of there a long time ago. When colonists first came here, they started hunting the whale. Old stories say that you could walk on the back of those whales from here to Plymouth. We don't know how many there were, but we know by the turn of the last century, they were down to maybe just less than 100 individuals, and their numbers grew steadily, I should say grew slowly, um, to up to a couple years ago, we thought we had about 500, which is still not very many. Um, but the past couple years have been very hard on these animals. We've had a lot of deaths. Um, very few calves have been born. Um, and they are susceptible to getting hit by ships and getting, uh, but their biggest threat is getting entangled in, in fishing gear. And because of that, their numbers are very low and unfortunately they're going down. You know, one of my most amazing moments doing walks not virtual walks, but in-person walks was one of my first years as a as the Marine Education Director. I scheduled a walk and no one shows up, which sometimes that happens with environmental ed programs. But I decided to go for a walk anyway. It's a beautiful day, April, 70 degrees, and I'm walking down the beach. Day much like today, a little bit warmer. And uh, Suddenly I see this right whale breach, reaches to jump out of the water. I'd never seen a right whale do that. I didn't even know that right whales breached. I know that humpbacks do it. It's quite common among humpbacks, but I've never seen a right whale do it. And of course I was standing there all by myself, wanting to jump up and down, how, saying how cool this was. You know, being an environmental educator is, is about sharing your passion with, with, in my case, it's the ocean, but it could be the woods, it could be 
salt marshes, it could be insects, um, whatever there is in nature that you're passionate about. Environmental education is about sharing that passion. And as I said, for me, it's the ocean. I love everything about the ocean. As a kid, I used to go on whale watch and love whales, but I love the, the microscopic plankton just as much. I love diving. I love being in the ocean, on top of the ocean. And that's what environmental education gives you. It gives you that opportunity to explore your passions in, in nature and teach others. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed our little walk. I'm sorry we didn't get to see any live whales. Um, still don't see anything, but, but we got to come out on a beautiful day, see what it's like out here at the tip of Cape Cod, looking for some stuff, learn a little information, and that is a lot what being an environmental educator is the best part of it. You know, we, uh, we get to come out, we get to talk about things we're passionate about, and, and sometimes we get to see them and sometimes not. But I uh, hope you've learned a little bit today, and uh, don't worry, I won't, I won't make you walk back with me. So uh, have a great day, and um, come out for real and visit us, see if we can see some whales later this month. Take care.